our last lesson in module 13 is lesson 4 in which we're going to take a look at the volume of compound figures. Now this isn't actually a lesson in my interview, but I think it's something worthwhile going over regardless. So we're going to be looking at the volume of compound figures and our goal for this lesson is to determine the volume of various compound figures. Now as far as various as far as compound figures goes we're, we're going to go ahead and define that as a solid shape made up of a combination of cylinders, cones, and spheres. So we're going to be taking two of those three, sh three uh, shapes, or maybe even all four for some examples, combining them together to form one solid shape, and then finding the volume of that shape. So that is our goal for this lesson, determining the volume of various compound figures. Let's go ahead and take a look at our first example. Our first example says that a silo has a diameter of 12 feet and a height of 20 feet. Find the volume of the silo. Now, if you've never been to the farm and don't know what a silo looks like, a silo is essentially a, a cylinder with a hemisphere on top of it. So it looks something like this. So again, we've got our cylinder here, and on top of that cylinder is going to be the hemisphere. And in the directions for the problem, we're told that there is a overall height of 20 feet and a diameter of 12 feet. So before we can go ahead and instantly start finding the volume, we need to separate these pieces. Now we don't need to actually draw them separately, but we need to consider the hemisphere and the cylinder separately. Now it has an overall height of 20 feet, and we know that the diameter is 12 feet. And if the diameter is 12 feet, then we should automatically know that the radius is going to be 6 feet. Now that 6 feet, 6 foot radius, that's going to be the radius for both the hemisphere and for the cylinder as well. So, in figuring out the height for the cylinder, we need to account for that six foot radius of the hemisphere. So if the overall height of the, to of the structure would be 20 feet and the radius of the hemisphere is six feet, that tells us that this distance here is six feet. And if that distance is six feet, then the height of just a cylinder is going to be 14 feet. Okay, we take this six feet away from the overall height of 20 feet, and we get a height for the cylinder to be 14 feet. And that should be all the information that we need in order to find the volume of these two figures. So let's find the volume of the hemisphere first. So we'll call that VH is equal to 2 thirds times pi times 6 cubed. Our first step here is going to be to take 6 and cube it. So the volume of the hemisphere is going to be equal to 2 thirds times pi times 218. And I think to help make everybody's lives a little bit easier, we're just going to be dealing with approximate volumes. I know in lessons 1, 2, and 3, we've been dealing with both exact and approximate volumes. But for the compound solids, we're just going to be focused on approximate volumes. So we can go ahead and take pi times 218 times 2 divided by 3. And that will give us our approximate volume of the hemisphere. Once again, that's 218 times pi times 2 divided by 3. Or 218 times pi multiplied by 2 thirds. Whichever you think is easier works for me. And of course, by 218, I mean 216. So 216 times pi times 2 thirds is going to get us an approximate volume equal to 452.4 cubic feet. All right, so 452.4 cubic feet for the approximate volume of the hemisphere. 
Now we still need to find the volume of the cylinder. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit, give us a little more space. And our information for the cylinder is going to be 14 for the height and 6 for the radius. So scroll down a little bit. Again, V is equal to, let's try color, V is equal to pi r squared h. So we have pi times 6 squared times 14. V is equal to pi times 36 times 14. And we can just multiply these three together. We're not doing any exacts. So we can just multiply them all together. And we get V is equal to 1,583.4 cubic feet, or feet cubed. All right, so we have the volume of the cylinder. And here, we have the volume of the hemisphere. We're trying to find the total volume, though. So the total volume we get by adding these two together. Again, adding 1,583.4 plus 452.4. And when we add those together, we get 2,035.8 cubic feet. So if we had a silo that, met, that had these dimensions here, 6 foot radius, 20 foot overall height, 14 foot height of the cylinder, the total volume of that silo would be 2,035.8 cubic feet. And again, we got that by finding the volume of the solid, finding the volume of the hemisphere, and adding them together. All right, let's take a look at a couple more examples. For our second example, we're told to find the volume of ice cream you would get from a cone that's four inches tall with a two inch opening when you're using a scooper that has a 1.5 inch radius. Now if you're having a tough time visualizing that, let's go ahead and draw a picture of it. So we'll start with our cone. All right, and then we can do a little waffle pattern if you like. I'm just wasting time. Lovely. This is turning out way better than I ever possibly dreamed. All right, so we have our cone. And then on top of that, we have our ice cream. Uh, let's do some mint ice cream. So the opening of the cone is going to be two inches. So this distance across here is going to be two inches, but our radius is going to be 1.5 inches. So the diameter of the scoop is actually going to be bigger than the opening of the cone. So our scoop of ice cream is going to look like this. So it's going to be a little bit bigger than the opening of the cone. And that's okay. It'll sit right on top of the cone and it will be delicious. So let's do some mint, some mint chocolate chip. Some mint chocolate chip ice cream. Sounds good. All right, there we have it. Now as before, we have two separate volumes that we have to find. We have to find the volume of the cone and the volume of the scoop itself. So the volume of the cone is going to be one-third times pi. Now the radius here we find from the two-inch opening. Now if there's a two-inch opening here that means from side to side it's two inches. So that means that the radius is actually going to be one inch. So our radius is 1, which is gets squared, times the height, which is 4. Again, half of this opening gives us our radius of 1, and it's 4 inches tall, which is where we get our height. To find the volume of these, we uh, first have to square this number here, which we know that's not going to change because we're squaring 1, but we still go through the motions of showing our work. So the volume of the cone is going to be 1 third pi times 1 times 4. Now we go ahead and multiply all these together. We can multiply 4 times 1 times pi and then divide by 3 to get our volume of the cone. So the volume of the cone is going to be equal to 
about 4.6 inches cubed, or 4.6 cubic inches. That's going to be the volume of just the cone. All right, so that's the, the bottom part. Now we also need to find the volume of the hemisphere of ice cream that we have on top of our cone. So the volume of the hemisphere is going to be 2 thirds pi times 1.5 cubed. And there's where we need a calculator. Just cube 1.5. We'll get the volume of the hemisphere is equal to 2 thirds times pi times 3.375. I'm going to take that 3.375, multiply it by pi, multiply it by 2, and then divide by 3. If you would rather take this number multiplied by pi, multiply by 2 thirds, you can do that as well. But when we multiply those together, we get the volume of the hemisphere of ice cream is equal to about 7.1 cubic inches. All right, so we've got our volume of the cone, volume of the hemisphere sitting on top of the cone. When we add those together, we get a total volume equal to 11.7 cubic inches of ice cream. All right, 11.7 cubic inches of ice cream in your cone and hemisphere of ice cream that we've got there. All right, that's our second example. We'll let's take a look at one more. For the last example, we are told that a certain volleyball bag can hold six eight-inch volleyballs in a row, forming a cylinder shape. What is the volume of empty space in the bag when it is carrying six volleyballs? Now this one's kind of difficult to visualize. I'm going to go ahead and draw it out. We're going to start with a cylinder laying on its side. All right, so we've got the cylinder laying on its side with the convenient carrying handle up at the top. And now inside of that bag, we're going to have six volleyballs. All right, so I had to make my case a little bit bigger. So now there are six volleyballs inside of the carrying case. So we're going to start off, let's look at just the, finding the volume of the carrying case. We're told that each volleyball has a diameter of 8 inches. All right, so each volleyball has a diameter of 8 inches. And if the, diameters have a vo if the volleyballs have a diameter of 8 inches, then we know that the carrying case also has a diameter of 8 inches. So this distance right here is going to be 8 inches. And if each volleyball has a diameter of 8 inches going across, then we take 8, 16, 24, we're adding 6, I'm sorry, we're adding 8 inches for each ball to find the length, or we can consider that the height of the carrying case. So 6 volleyballs times 8 inches is going to give us a height of 48 inches for the carrying case. And again, that's an 8 inch volleyball times 6 volleyballs is going to give us a total length of 48 inches. Now we should know that if the diameter of the volleyball is 8 inches, that's going to make the radius be 4 inches. So the radius of the cylinder is going to be 4 inches, the radius of the volleyballs is also going to be 4 inches. Let's focus on finding the volume of the carrying case first. So we have V is equal to pi times 4 squared times 48. So V is equal to pi times 16 times 48. And again, we're not so worried about exact. We're worried about approximate for, compo for compound solids, compound figures. So we'll take 48 times 16 times pi. And when we do that, we get V is equal to 2,412.7 Q 
cubic inches. All right. So that has a volume, the carrying case alone, has a volume of 2,412.7 inches. Now let's find the volume of just one volleyball. So for the volume of one volleyball, V is equal to pi. Let's change that. Four thirds times pi times four cubed. We should know that 4 cubed is equal to 64, so we have 4 thirds times pi times 64. We can multiply 64 times pi times 4 and divide by 3, or 64 times pi times 4 thirds, whatever is easier for you. So V, the volume of the just one volleyball, is about 268. Point one inches cubed. So we have to keep in mind that there's not just one volleyball in the bag, there's six. So we have to take that value, multiply by six, and when we do that, we get a value of about 1,608.5 inches cubed. Now to find, we're told to find the volume of empty space in the bag. So if we know that the volume of the bag is about 2,400, and the volume of the six volleyballs is about 1,600, we're going to subtract to find the volume of empty space. So, again, this number here minus this number here is going to give us a total volume of empty space equal to 804.2, not centimeters, inches cubed. So there's quite a bit of empty space in, a, in that bag. 804.2 inches cubed is the amount of empty space after loading six volleyballs into that bag. To me, that number seems high. If you guys spot a mistake that I made, let me know in class, and I'll go back and edit the video to give you credit for helping me out with this problem. But uh, as far as I can tell, there is about one-third of the bag is empty. All right, again, here's our total volume. Here's our empty volume. So about one-third of the bag is empty. does not have any volleyball filling it up. And that wraps up our last lesson in Module 13 in which we're finding the volume of compound figures. Hopefully at this point you're able to determine the volume of various compound figures. Any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and write them down so that we can address them in class together.